Welcome to Radic Cards TV. I'm your host, Patrick, and today we're going to be talking about uh, what I got today at Frank's. I know I do this a lot, but for some reason I like going down there and just talking with people that I know and having a conversation with them. So I didn't have any specific expectation when I got there. I didn't have like anything I actually wanted to buy. I was just kind of perusing. So um, let's see what I got today. So I had a buddy of mine that was selling... Um, early 90s wax, junk wax, for really cheap, 10 cents a pack. And he had 33 packs of 1990 tops, and so I bought them all, obviously with the intention of potentially pulling the no-name on front, Frank Thomas. Now, it's my understanding that the, the no-name is actually not in the wax, but actually was released in the early release cello packs, and like test cellos is what they call them. So I'm, I, it's unlikely I'll, I'll acquire the uh, no name out of these packs, but it's going to be a lot of fun opening these 1990 Tops packs. That's always what I think about when I see 1990 Tops packs on open wax, is that if I buy it, then I have a chance of pulling the, the error, um, or one of the no name, the like blacklist errors that are in the 1990 Tops. So anyway, I'm not going to open this right now or any of the packs, but I just figured I'd share since it's kind of an exciting, exciting acquisition for me. So my hand is like being eaten by this bag here. So I did acquire a bunch of stuff. I I bought a guy out of his Thomas collection because the cards are really cheap. We won't go through all of them, but I'll, I'll like pull a few out and then we can talk about some of them. So okay, put this here and then put that there. Shit. There. Okay, so we'll kind of just go through it here. This is what I got today. This is a stack of Frank Thomas cards. I own most of them, but like I said, the guy wasn't going to be there anymore, and so I didn't... I kind of went through them loosely and saw that I had a bunch of them. So we'll go through those a, li a little bit later. Let's talk about some of the stuff that I got that I don't already have. So... I got this Kenny Lofton, this 92 score update card, only because at one point, if I can recall correctly, this particular card was only released in sets, and at the time in 92, Kenny Lofton was a real big hot shot, and this card, I believe, was in well under the double figures. I don't think it's anywhere near that these days. I paid like 10 cents for this card. The funny thing about Kenny Lofton, 92, the rookies or the update set with Kenny Lofton at a point was worth $80. I remember looking at the old Beckett with Mickey Mantle on the front from I think it was like October of 95, the black and white cover, kind of a famous uh, Beckett. And at the time, that this not this card, but the 92 update, $92 update, Kenny Lofton was worth quite a bit of money. So I, if I can recall, this one was one of those that was up there as well. Kind of a cool, um, nostalgic acquisition. So. Obviously, you know, being a Frank Thomas collector, I, 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 I deviate occasionally from my, my focus and, and acquire and work on like other projects just for fun. So I have a buddy who collects just uh, Detroit Tigers stuff. And um, I was like, you know, thinking, do I have a team? I don't have a team, but I have a player and he's on a team. And so I was like, well, maybe I can acquire uh, White Sox cards, you know, players or whatever. So I, for a minute there, I was collecting teams, old team sets of White Sox, vintage White Sox, and I kind of lost interest. Like, I thought it was cool for a bit, but I didn't stick with it. And so um, these days, if I'm not collecting Thomas stuff, it's like outside of 90s inserts, sometimes I'll just very casually and loosely look for White Sox parallels and inserts and things like that. But I won't, com I won't commit myself to any degree of, like, strength to those projects. It's just very, very casual. So this is one of those acquisitions that I acquired that was a 74 Topps Dick Allen with the um, old Topps logo stamped on there. Kind of can see that there. Now I believe these were pulled out of uh, 2014 Topps or 2013 Topps. I don't quite remember specifically how they were introduced into the market. I think it was just they were inserted in the packs ra randomly. And I don't know to what degree, like insertion ratio statistically, what it was. Was it once a box, twice a box, once a case? I don't quite know, but the guy had quite a few. This was the only White Sox one. Now I looked on the back of this card. Dick Allen had a very stellar career. And it's my understanding the reason why he didn't make Hall of Fame is because he was kind of a jerk. Um, that's really all I know, and that might just be water cooler talk. I can't really back that up with certainty, but I've just, you know, heard some interviews and things with 
baseball historians and things like that, that um, his attitude played a huge role in whether or not he was uh, going to be considered for the Hall of Fame. I think that that eligibility has come to pass, um, and he's probably just one of those guys that you know won't be in the Hall of Fame ever. But anyway, he was on the White Sox when the White Sox did their red, uh, red and white color variation of branding, which I thought was interesting. And 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 to me, with branding, because the Red Sox existed and the White Sox existed, this, I think, threw off a lot of people, at least I would anticipate that being the case, that were getting into baseball at the time and they saw this and saw the White Sox having red in their uniform. I think it'd be kind of confusing to a, a novel market. So um, I'm actually glad that this was a quick thing, even though it is very interesting to me. I know that in 1996, they did the green uniforms for a St. Patrick's Day thing. So that was kind of interesting. Anywho, I got that as an acquisition to like kind of set aside in my very casual um, White Sox collection. A couple Frank Thomas cards that I like that I have a few doubles of, I just think they're cool, is the um, 94 Leaf or 94 Donruss uh, Leaf reprint, which is just kind of a fun, fun card to have. But instead of the dull silver, they have the brightly finished foil silver on there. Five year anniversary. <laughs> It's funny in a company that has a five-year anniversary. Like Topps is celebrating their 60th anniversary, and well, actually, Topps at the time this is 94, so they're really celebrating their um, 43rd anniversary, I guess it would be. And Leaf was selling their fifth anniversary, celebrating their fifth anniversary. So anyway, these are kind of cool, very inexpensive. And there's the 95 Leaf Thomas collection. They had, this is a uh, set of six cards. This is card number two in the set. I have a bunch of these. These are fun. These can, there are a couple errors that you can acquire, like overprints and things. They're kind of hard to, hard to find, but I always look for them. Uh, just a classic rendition of uh, Frank Thomas, celebration of Frank Thomas. One of my favorites here, uh, I think this is 94, 93 or 94 triple play nicknames. Big Hurt. At one point, this card was worth like $12. I think it's much less than that now, but really cool card. Great design, very simple. The hollow foil nameplate up there at the top, and the um, strike through at the bottom with his name in red. Good stuff, good classic stuff. 96 score, artist proof, Frank Thomas. Love that shot of him doing the, of course, the national anthems. You know, baseball players would take their hats off and sort of bow and this out of respect of National Anthem. So, I remember when I first acquired this card actually in the, uh, I was in middle school and um, I was going to card shows a lot when they were in the hotels and things surrounding my neighborhood. I really missed that a lot actually. I think I've talked about that in other videos. I got two more of these. Can't go wrong with the classic rookies of score and Bowman, Frank Thomas. <laughs> these were throw-ins. I have quite a few of these but I mean when I'm going through bargain bins and I see them I pull them out just because it's like Never hurts to have more. So here's another um, White Sox acquisition. This is another throw-in. This is a Greg Norton. This is premier date from 2000 Pacific. So this is number 37. There are only 37 of these. Now I know there's a lot of like there's a, there are, there's you know niche markets that 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 don't really like Pacific it, or it's kind of like one of those brands that you either love it or hate it. I love Pacific because they, I think they're right, way ahead of their time. You know, I think that they were doing things that, that the companies hadn't thought of yet. Some people think that they're more akin to like a high school yearbook committee because a lot of their things are kind of kitschy looking. But to me, I felt that they did things with parallels and, and they were trying a lot of different things out that, that I don't think had caught on until uh, well into the 2000s with Donner's Diamond Kings, Moments and Milestones, uh, Studio Portraits, um, heck, even Leaf Exhibits in 2004, uh, these mega parallel sets. I think. You know, it's a lot of that started really um, in the late 90s when Pacific was taking their various color parallels. Um, 99 Pacific was a classic example of that. There are like 18 different versions of that card. I, you know, it took me a long time to finish those runs, but the premier dates are one of those lower numbered parallels. You know, a lot of them are in the 20s and 30s, uh, some later on, but I just think they're really cool. They even had opening day or a very similar variation of that. They had premier date, opening day. They were, um, uh, there was uh, like 
very similar in the nature that they were low number prints and they had similar uh, they had similar uh, stamps on them. This one has like a, a star with text over it and under it, and then a stamp with a serial number uh, there inside the star. Very cool stuff. Stuff you don't really see often. I think it's shuffled aside quickly and, and frequently just because it's. Um, if you, I mean, who collects Greg Norton? I don't really know. I, I don't. But this is a White Sox card, and I have a buddy who sort of stimulates interest in me um, when when I go through his collection because he has his. Uh, well, you know, it's my buddy Anthony. I've showcased his um, his collection in, in previous videos. I went through his his latest box of acquisitions recently and it was all tiger stuff and it was all low numbered parallels autographs things like that really interesting stuff so when i see that it stimulates an interest in me to collect things like on the side of white Sox players and just kind of cool looking cards this would be one of those so i got that and i got a roger clemens today uh, i don't usually don't deviate other players but i think roger clemens got a bad rap um and I think he's the poor guy's had stigmatization because of the steroid thing. And um, I think I thought he was a great pitcher. But uh, this is from 2001 Topps Chrome. This is the Golden Anniversary Refractor. Now I'm still looking for the Thomas as I'm as we're filming this. The refractor. It's very very difficult for me to find for some reason. I don't know why. But I got the the Roger Clemens refractor today. I don't know if you can see it with the with the, the sunlight there, it's refracting. You can see like the different color variations. This this is a really, really beautiful card. It's 50 cards in the set. And I haven't decided if I want to collect this whole set or not. I know the Jeter and the Ripken uh, produced high performance yields on eBay, things like that. Um, but I was happy to acquire the, the Roger Clemens for $10 today. I know it's got the stamp on there for 50, but of course I didn't pay that. It's kind of cool. I really like the uh, the design in the background. It has like this like Ninja Turtles sort of shell looking design thing in there. Those I guess is two, three, four, five, six six sided shapes. Anyway, kind of fun stuff. Uh, going to the I won't go through all of these just because there there are many, but just pick out a few fun ones. I remember when I acquired this is the Thomas stuff overflow that I bought from that guy. I just bought him out <laughs> seven bucks for that. It's kind of funny. Um, 95 Ultra Home Run Kings. I remember when I acquired this, I bought, I paid three dollars, I think, for this when I was younger. And I remember looking at this and being like, "That's a really good-looking card." The purple, the green, the orange. Um, it's just stuff you don't see too frequently these days, or at least at the time in '95, I felt that Ultra was kind of a very forward company. Well, no, maybe not as innovative as. I mean, maybe they're one of the more innovative companies. All I can tell you is that, all I can remember is that. Ultra was one of those companies where almost every one of their insert sets were beautiful. To me, at least. I thought aesthetically appealing, uh, they were really on top of their game. So this would be one of those that I really appreciated. You kind of see the purple and the green and the orange there. Even in the back, they emulate that same color combination. Really cool stuff. So, and then we've got the 96 Ultra uh, on-base leaders. So there's a gold medallion parallel of this, and it's only released in retail packs, which means it's big box. So it's like Target, you know, um, Walmart and uh, Kmart, things like that, 7-Eleven. So it was really hard to find the gold medallions of these. In fact, it was the last one I needed in the run of, of, of cards for 96 Ultra. It took me a while to acquire these. You just don't see them too often, but love that stuff. Here's a fun one. This is uh, 99 Skylox Thunder Hypnotized. It's a classic colorful card there. I think it's beautiful. Huge fan. Probably in its heyday, that card was like $12, but these days it's in the 10 cent bin. <laughs> Funny. Uh, 96 Ultra RBI Kings with the baseballs in the background. Again, one with the gold medallions that are kind of tougher to find. Not, I don't think it's a retail exclusive, however. 96 Ultra Respect, another classic. Again, Ultra just kind of did a lot of damage with their um, beautiful display of various inserts that they, they um, produced back in the 90s. I just love it. I think it's cool. One of my favorite companies. Fleer, I miss Fleer. I also miss Don Russ when they were owned by themselves instead of, I mean, Panini's Don Russ are great. I just miss Don Russ being owned by Don Russ. Um, 97 Don Russ Dominators. Not as exciting as some of the others we've seen today already, but still a classic. 97. So then I've got, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, this is fun. This is uh, 2003 EX. So you can see it's translucent. It's just this is when baseball cards were utilizing the plastic instead of cardboard. 
So the central credentials now and future of these are really cool. I really like the set. Just kind of go through what else is interesting here. Some of the stuff is more interesting than others. Oh, this is cool. This is 95 Sport Flix checklist. <laughs> Funny thing about this card is that I was going through my um, Craig Thomas's cards and I was archiving. We finally finished that. It took me months and months and months. But uh, I had the artist proof of this and I couldn't find it. Along with a bunch of other cards. I couldn't find it. I was like, where are these cards? Well, I'd moved like five times since being in California. I moved out here in uh, 2009. I've moved several times since then. And everything's kind of just been together, but in various boxes. And so I remember like I had some overflow and like there was a brick of cards like that thick in this box. And all the stuff that I'd miss was missing was all in that box. And this was one of those cards. Kind of a little cute story and anecdote for you there. What else? Oh, this is fun. 96 Pinnacle when they did the Denny's promotion. You buy a Grand Slam breakfast and you get a baseball card. And this was one of those cards that you could get. Love it. Black Border, classic. So they talk about, every time I hear someone talk about cards of Black Border, I'm reminded that of stories of people talking about 71 Tops that has a Black Border, and they always talk about how hard it is to find Black Bordered cards with, you know, that are conditioned, conditioned and mint conditioned because Black Border flakes off. You know, they always talk about that. 71 Tops, it always comes up. It's hard, condition sensitive. Um, this is. 1999 Upper Deck Holographics Gold. Awesome. It's the awesome parallel. Love that. That's cool. Kitschy. It's cool. What else we got here? I've bought a lot of these of Future Heroes. 93 Upper Deck. First one I got was in 94. My stepfather bought me a set of these, and then I just have acquired various copies ever since. Um, a lot of this stuff is just sort of whatever. Um, 99 UD Ionix Nitro. The classic. Love this background in green. Ha! It's cool. It's fun. Ah! Oh, this is cool. I'm not sure if I have this or not, but I do now. 99 Ultra Gold Medallion. This is a Platinum Medallion version of this. Numbered, I think, 100 or 99 or 50 or something. I don't quite remember. It's been a while. So yeah, this is these down. Started getting heavy. I think it's 93 Studio Silhouettes. Very interesting looking card. I like that though. I remember buying packs and acquiring this card for the first time, being really excited about it. It's <laughs> cool. Oh, this is fun. This is 508. This thing in this is an HR version, but it's not. There's a 97 score hobby reserve card 508. Now there's a version of this card that has HR in front of the designation of 508, the numbering. I don't have it. I look for it occasionally. And I'll finish it off with this one. This is, uh, I believe, another Denny's exclusive. Maybe not. Upper deck, is it? Anywho. This is 94 Upper Deck, um, Anniversary Edition? I think it is Denny's. Yeah, Denny's Hologram. It is. Ha! You can probably barely see it. All you see is silver there, I'm sure. It's back when holograms were really hard to, like, hologram. <laughs> anyway, that was, that was my day-to-day. -day. It was, it was a lot of fun. I like going down there. It's, 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 a, it's, it's quite a drive. It's really out of my way, but... I actually went down to see. I had a good time seeing if uh, I was just catching up with dealers and seeing if the guy had gone to the national that he brought back. Uh, I'm probably gonna do that next year again. Anyway, that's what this story. Thank you for watching another episode of Rowdy Cards TV. I'm your host, Patrick. Until next time, enjoy collecting.